Hi, this is Ben Rogerson from MusicRadar.com at Producer Sessions Live 2011. I'm here with Mark Hill now, formerly of Artful Dodger, who's done his session this morning, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, Mark, how did it go? Uh, it went really well, actually. Uh, I, I didn't know what to expect. It was quite of, um, it's like being out of your comfort zone. One, being at the SAE, which is obviously, you know, being kind of sort of self-taught and everything. Uh, you know, it can be quite intimidating, even when you've been in the business 20 years, because you know, you know, these guys actually know their, you know, know their stuff. Uh, and also, you know, the idea of actually taking tracks and explaining uh, you know, talking through your tracks in front of an audience is quite a quite a bizarre, um, you know, quite alien feeling as well. Because usually, you know, I'm in my own head in a in a dark studio, uh, and you just kind of you know a lot of stuff you do automatically without really thinking about thinking about what you're doing. So no, it was it was interesting to yeah to kind of, you know try and put that across. I know you kind of broke down your new single. So um, so what's your approach when you're starting to write a song? Um, uh, the main thing I suppose is to actually treat it as a song you know treat it as i would have done if i was kind of playing in a live band actually usually just sit with a piano sit with a guitar sit with the kind of very basic instruments uh and, and try and kind of build a song from you know a very very basic you know kind of chords you know chords and kind of melody uh standpoint because i know that if you know if i can achieve something that i think sounds great in that context when you start to produce it um you know, you've got that kind of well, sort of firm foundation, I suppose, to kind of build on, and then you can start kind of playing with the tricks and uh, you know, actually like building up the actual sound of it and the production of it. But you know, you know, even if you're doing a club track at the very heart of it, you've got a song that works acoustically. So then, when you kind of come to strip it back um, to go out and play it live and stuff, you know, it'll it'll kind of still work and hopefully still resonate with people. You mentioned that you've been making music for a while. So, what do you think are the key differences between the industry and the way you have the way you work now as opposed to then? Oh, they're just <laughs> you know it's just a world of difference um you know, I do quite a few master classes um you know back home in the studio and trying to explain to people what we had to go through you know fifteen twenty you know nearly twenty years ago in the studio because i was i'm never you know i never worked in the in the tape domain so i never used um you know kind of real real to real tape so we started out um digitally but back then we had like eight tracks um at the very peak we had like eight tracks of hard drive uh, hard disk to play with and then we were trying to sync up adats and we were having to bounce stuff down even the, you know when i made born to do it with craig david um you know nothing was automated you know we had uh, i was using at the time a soundtracks topaz desk w which cost me probably about a thousand pound and it was just it was completely analog uh you know very very cheap no you know no automation whatsoever uh, and everything else was midi gear so it was always kind of syncing up midi uh you know we had like banks of like emu like emu pro you know mo fat in turbo fat and all the jv 1080s and all that kind of stuff so we had like banks and banks of midi gear and, we, and you know you'd kind of work work your way through a session and then when it came to kind of saving it if you didn't finish the track that day uh you know you'd have to literally painstakingly write down all the settings for everything and try and kind of save it so um you know the actual process of writing and kind of producing music back then was just it was a living nightmare but now you know click apple s and, and you're away and uh uh, you know, life's a lot, a lot, a lot less stressful. So, what are the key pieces of software in your setup these days? Then, um, Logic as as the kind of key basis for uh, for writing. Um, you know, I try and keep a lot of my tracks even now, even though they're kind of club oriented. They they've got a sort of grounding in in acoustic stuff. So, I tend to kind of record guitar, vocals, um, you know, some key sounds, and. Um, yeah, so Logic is the kind of sort of mainstay, and you know, pretty much everything else is kind of sort of plugins um, actually based within Logic. Uh, I mean, I love the Spectrosonics stuff like Stylus RMX and um, Trillion. Um, the Linar Digital, Silent, I use quite a lot. Um, a lot of the native instrument stuff. Um, I used to DJ using Tractor, but now I kind of I use uh, Massive and Contact um, again as plugins. Um, what else do I use regularly? Um, uh, I've got like, a couple of Korg plugins. Um, it's probably because a lot of the stuff is kind of guitar led and kind of acoustic instruments. I mean, to be honest, most of the stuff I use is, is stuff that actually comes, w you know, with Logic. You know, a lot of the sort of jam pack instruments and, and the kind of built in, um, you know, the built in uh, audio units. Okay, so what are you up to? What are you working on at the moment? And what are you up to next? Uh, just sort of started a new project really. I kind of fell back in love with being in the studio again a couple of years ago after spending a few years out having kids and, and having a family and all that sort of stuff and just taking it easy um, and uh, decided uh, I spent about a year kind of producing for all sorts of artists and got quite frustrated by the fact there's very little money in the music business these days and it was really difficult to you know, spend a lot of time working on a project and developing a project to find the A&R guys would get sacked or the artists would get dropped so there was a lot of that for about 12 months but that kind of, you know, while I was going through that period, I really, you know, got, got the buzz back for 
getting in the studio and making music and I decided to um, almost like restart what I did sort of 10 years ago with the Artful Dodger project and actually you know, set up a new label um, set up a new kind of a, you know, make a new artist album um, which I'm doing under the name Artful this time around and just you know trying to find and develop new singers and you know new artists to work with and new writers uh, I was very lucky you know kind of early on to work with Ed Sheeran before he got signed and uh, you know the first single I wrote with him could just be the bass line is out um, next week um, and uh, yeah, just having a you know well of a time and you know, trying to find you know new artists and you know, getting the tracks out there. Brilliant, Mark Hill. Thank you very much.